When you hear the chimes, the hour will be seven o'clock. For your entertainment, Grant Murdoch, the clarion voice of the air, will sing a group of songs. Norman Wilder at the piano. Grant Murdoch singing, Tell Me Once More. modeling girly. I remember him two years ago. A big, beautiful animal posing in the life class at the Art League and later for Colorado. And now he gets 1500 every time he sings. And you're telling me to stick to my modeling? Still selling cigarettes, sister? Or is some man crowned your queen of the maid? No man has crowned me yet, brother. I live in hope. Thanks. You're welcome. Sweet pea, give us a look, will you? Give us a look. Yes, sir. It's from the sap, Lefty. I'm singing to you now. <laughs> oh, don't take it like that. The only difference between Elsa's racket and ours is she gets the flowers while she can still smell them. Give me them flowers. Yes, sir. No use tipping your hand. I told the boss not to put her on this job. Oh, uh, Elsa don't care for nobody but you, Lefty. Take them in. Yes, sir. Does that look like I've fallen down? I'm moving in tomorrow. First my suitcases, then in go the trunks. I'm going to marry Grant Murdoch. There. Flowers from him. Bring them here, Minnie. Yes, ma'am. Does these look like I've fallen down? Sends me a box every night. He used to send flowers to other women. But I put a stop to that. I made him promise he wouldn't even give an autograph to anyone but me. <laughs> Look at this card. I'm singing to you now. Singing to me. Others are listening in. Millions of women. But he's singing only to me. Does that look like... Joe, why don't you say something? Look, give me more time, Joe. Ike Bergen fell down. Listen, Joe. Minnie. Yes, sir? Get out. Yes, 
You've lost your head. You've fallen for this crooner. She's not a crooner. She's got the swellest voice I ever heard on the radio. Anyway, it's the first time I ever fell for anyone except Lefty. And Joe, the harder I fall, the better I work. You've had a month already. And you haven't gotten rid of Murdoch's manager. That's all that interests me. Bergen had more than a month. And you told him he could offer Wilder 50 grand, then 100 grand to fade out of the picture. And what happened? Wilder just laughed at Ike. <laughs> That's why I put you in. I told you the beer racket is out. This is a new racket. Well, if you give me more time. Listen, Joe. You listen. There isn't any more time to waste. At the end of this week, Wilder will be signing new radio contracts for Grant Murdoch. I got contracts all drawn up. I got a new manager to take Wilder's place. I even got a new piano player. Half a million a year to be split up. And you've fallen down. Joe, you've got to listen. That question mark of a manager's got a hold on Grant. He's got him hypnotized. Oh, I'm not imagining things. Why, he's even got the run of his, his apartment. And Grant's afraid to ask him for the key. He's scared of Wilder. He won't be scared of Wilder after tonight. But you're out. What do you mean? Your cut goes to an old friend of yours. He's in there, waiting. Who do you mean? Joe, not Lefty Morris. Oh, Joe, you can't do that. Lefty knows I've fallen for Grant. You kill him. That's all he knows how to do is just kill and kill. I'm not killing the goose with a golden voice. Lefty will do your job. He'll get rid of Murdoch's manager. But they'll trace it to you, Joe. To me. I can't help it if he gets bumped off accidental in a gang fight, can I? Anyway, you're out of it. I'm glad I'm out of it. But I'll get a bigger cut. I tell you, I'm going to marry Grant Murdoch. <laughs> get down to the radio building. You can pick him up there. Step on it. You just go ahead and marry that singing man and laugh at them all. And when Mr. Murdoch sees you in this dress, he's going to be dead in an hour. Oh, that's just because you're so emotional. I'm poisoned, Minnie. No, you ain't poisoned. You just got away. He'll be through singing in no time, Miss Elsa. You better get dressed if you're going to meet him. All right. You have just heard Grant Murdoch in a group of songs, accompanied by Norman Wilder. This concludes the Murdoch broadcast, which will come to you twice a day during the anniversary week through the courtesy of the Radio Advertisers Association. Grant Murdoch will be on the air again at 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon and 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. Please stand by for station announcements.
Oh, I'm putting in a new song tomorrow afternoon. I'll coach you in it tonight and tomorrow morning. Say, I've got to have some time to myself. We put in a new song last week. A lot depends on whether I can see Mr. Wilder tonight. Tell him I'll only take a minute or two of his time. I'll fix it, just as soon as he finishes sorting Mr. Murdoch's fan mail. Do you want an audition? No, but I do want to talk to him about my voice. Just leave it to me. I'll take care of it. He's a regular guy. Not like that. Say, when all the dames are gaga about a guy, there's usually something the matter with him. Hey, you want to go? Wait here till I come back. Right. I'll tell Mr. Wilder you got a swell voice, just like a canary. <laughs> oh, uh, you won't let me down, will you? You can sing, can't you? <laughs> oh, yes, I can sing. Okay. <laughs> oh. Hello. Working girls smile at last rewarded. Wearing them, I see. That means dinner with me Wednesday night? Uh-huh. Even as I have to rob the cash register for a new dress. Let me send you a new dress, together with an overnight case, prettily fitted out. Are you sure? All right. Just dinner, then, wherever you say. A soup kitchen with you would be the rich to me. Rich it is. Wednesday night? You bet. Okay. Okay, darling. Bye bye. 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 Oh, Sandy. Tell Mr. Wilder I'll rehearse that new song at his studio tomorrow morning. I have engagements tonight. Hi, Jake. Hi, Sandy. How's about it? Everything is a great. Hi, boy. Where's that little blonde you had the other night? Oh, Nick McCracken. Lefty Morris. And poison. Like somebody's going for a ride. Say, it just comes to me. The big shot Murdoch is running around with that dame that left he used to go with. Couple of nickels, sweetheart. If you got time, I'll roll you for the cigar as soon as I phone. All right. Here you are. Say, wasn't that the big radio singer just pulled out in that swell car? Sure was. Did manager come down yet? No, not yet. Thanks. Hi, Nancy. Hello, Sandy. Say, what guy sent you them cabbages? And who wants to know? Me, Sandy Higgins. Oh, Nancy, tell me who sent them, so I can bust him in the nose. But myself. Oh, no girl bought flowers for herself. Oh, no? Well, get wise, big boy. They all do. They pay for them anyway. Oh, fooling, Nancy. Tell me who sent them. Was it him? What does he want around here, anyhow? Nothing. Just wanted to know if Mr. Murdoch's manager had come down yet. What? My boss? Uh-huh.
You don't want to make sacrifices unless your voice justifies them. I don't want others to make sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Tell me, how long have you studied voice? Since I was 16. Even before that. But I don't want to continue unless I can reach the top. Well, it isn't an easy matter to reach the top. But it is simple to test your voice. Now, I have an appointment with Mr. Murdoch this evening, but if you'll tell me where I can get in touch with you... You're very kind, Mr. Wilder. No, not at all. I'm, I'm very, very interested. You have an unusual quality in your speaking voice. I think we could make the test tomorrow morning. I hope you can. Tomorrow I have to decide which way I'm going. I've reached a crossroads. Crossroads. Each day, hundreds of letters come to Mr. Murdoch. These are love letters. Mash notes. The secretary answers those. These I answer. They are from people whom, as you express it, have reached the crossroads. Some of them have even taken the wrong turning. And this broadcast has made them pause. This is from a man in prison. A criminal? Well, all of us commit crimes, so perhaps all of us are criminals. That man has the same emotions as you or I. This is from a woman who is dying. She asks for a particular song. It will be sung tomorrow afternoon. There are not more than eight or ten of these a day, but each one contains a heartening phrase that every musician should strive for. Each says in his own language, it's as though you were singing directly to me. It would be wonderful to have such a voice. The voice is merely an instrument. To reach people, one must have sympathy. The realization that every person in the world is a human being. Whether it's a king on his throne or a cripple on the street corner. You know, we're all of us very nearly alike. I shall always remember what you've said. Goodbye, and thank you, Mr. Adams. Goodbye. Say, boss, you got any business with a guy named Lefty Morris? Mr. Morris, Sandy, who's he? He's Joe Maestro's rod man. Rod man? Death, boss. Guns. He's downstairs waiting for you. Well, why didn't you bring him up? Bring him up? Why, boss, he bumps people off. Croaks them. Kills them for Joe Maestro. Oh, you have fantastic ideas, Sandy. Here, gather up the letters, will you? I have an appointment this evening. No fooling, boss. Killing is Lefty Morris's business, just the same as music is yours. It's very interesting. I'd like to talk to him. I tell you, boss, he don't talk. Ike Bergen did the talking when he offered a hundred grand to buy you off. He's Joe Maestro's mouthpiece lawyer. You just laughed at him, but I told you then they wouldn't stop at nothing. <laughs> it was very amusing, Sandy. He wanted to manage Mr. Murdoch. It's a racket, boss. You handle the jack for Murdoch, don't you? Jack? Money. Dough. Listen, boss, if I could play it on the piano, or you could understand the English language. <laughs> yes, Sandy, what then? Get this. Lefty Morris and two lookouts are downstairs waiting to take you for a ride. What? I... Yeah, I know. You got your own car, but it ain't that kind of a ride. They want to put you out of the way, bump you off. They want to kill you. But why? Oh, boss, but with you out of the way, they can make a play for the jack that Murdoch draws down. Couldn't they? With me out of the way? <laughs> oh, Sandy, you've no idea how laughable that is. Oh, boss, it's nothing to laugh at. Listen, boss. That woman that uh, Murdoch's running around with, she's in it too. She used to be Lefty Morris's mom, and she's still with the gang. Oh, boss, just this once, do what I tell you, will you, please? Baby, you ain't had a horse on me yet. That only proves that horses are scarcer around here than horses next. <laughs> Back then, boss. Lefty Morris. Don't lamp him like he was wise. There goes Mr. Wilder now. Swell guy. You get that tip off? Now, boss, do what I tell you.
Right through, boss. Jake Turner's packed his back of us. He's a pal of mine. A new song tonight. Oh, what did you tell him? Told him I wouldn't. You know, you were right in what you said yesterday. I've got to put him in his place and keep him there. Oh, did I say that? I really like the hunchback. Anyway, I'm sorry for him. But you might do better with a manager who could mix with people. And for piano players, you can buy them like bananas in the bunch you buy the car load. Pardon me. Oh, hello. Yes. She's here. Some man wants to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Hello. The hunchback has been bumped off. Accidental in a gang fight. The bulls are apt to come to the crooner's apartment. Say, what man's calling you at my apartment? Oh, it's the, it's the manager of the apartment house where I live. I should have moved my things over here this afternoon. My apartment's been robbed. But let's forget about it. Let's go out and make a round of the nightclubs and forget about everything. It's not a bad idea. The hunchback's liable to come here and insist on a rehearsal. I'll get that key away from him first thing tomorrow. Why do you keep talking about that hunchback? You're right. I hate him, too. I don't hate him. I don't hate anybody. I'm in love with you. Oh, Grant, for the first time in my life, I'm really in love all the way through. You know, don't get on your things and we'll go out and forget about everybody except just us. All right, darling. He didn't sign to give you my message. I told him I'd rehearse that song at your studio tomorrow morning. We're rehearsing it tonight. But I'm going out. I've got engagements. Come on, Grant. Don't let that hunchback tell you where to get off. Aside from the necessity of rehearsing, it might be as well if you chose your company a little more carefully. Are you trying to tell me who I can go with? Merely cautioning you. I don't want to take the time to create another celebrity. <laughs> Incidentally, the car I was supposed to be riding in tonight 
was riddled with bullets. What? Say, somebody must have thought I was in the car. No. But apparently some of your friends have planned to share in the profits of your voice. The most amusing thought. Why is he staring at me like that? He's crazy. Don't listen to him, Grant. He's trying to come between you and me. Come on. His mind's as twisted as his body. I'll be at your studio first thing in the morning. Dr. Brooks will bring me to your studio. Yes. Goodbye. Bob. Yes? Mr. Wilder's going to try my voice now, in half an hour, at his studio. But you don't have to have a crooner as a company to tell you whether you have a voice or not. Grant Murdoch isn't a crooner. He has the finest voice singing over the radio. But, Laura, can't we decide this for ourselves? Listen. Well, you had soap on your hands. Now, look, I'll take that job as doctor on the ship. Then we'll make a six-month honeymoon of this cruise. You can come back to your music, and I will have saved enough money to hang my shingle out in front of my own office. Oh, gee, honey, everything will be swell. That's what I really want to do, Bob. But first, let's go to Mr. Wilder's and see what he has to say. Well, all right. Maybe I should give up all thought of a career. Oh, no, don't do that. Well, you go finish the dishes while I change my dress. We've got to hurry. Well, all right, but don't forget to leave the door open so we can talk. I won't look. If you didn't, I'd never forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> Sugar, but no coffee, no bread, no oh, butter. we have some coffee and a ham hock. We'll cook it with a cabbage. Fine. And crackers and cheese, that's plain. That's a dollar. I'm glad. Just listen to that woman's voice. Norman Wilder certainly can pick talent. Dad, what's in those bundles for radio? You've sold something. What a lovely voice. Oh, yes, I did. I sold my masterpiece for $8. They said they'd use the design for wallpaper. <laughs> Come on. Come on. I'd like to try the range of your voice again. But first, tell me, what is the sacrifice you must make in order to keep on with your music? Well, you see, Mr. Wilder, I... Uh, we... She was thinking of me, Mr. Wilder. Oh, I understand. Question of a career or a marriage? There's a little more to it, but that's about the case. You see, we're both poor and... In love. I could go into some kind of business. Then Laura could have both marriage and a career. More doctors than sick people anyway. That's absurd, Mr. Wilder. Bob worked his way through college and medical school, and he served his internship. Now he's been offered the position of ship's doctor on a long cruise. He'll be able to save enough money to open his own office. Even if there were no question of money, music is a zealous master. So is love. It's up to you, Mr. Wilder. It all depends on what you think of her voice. She has as true a voice as I've heard in years. But if she wants to reach the top, the concert or the operatic stage, 
Someone will have to make sacrifices. You mean that if Laura's voice is properly trained, she'll become famous? Yes. But no great singer can serve two masters. You can't mean that... that Bob and I... But you don't know how much we love each other. She's going on with her music. Well, that is for you two to decide. If you come back at noon, Miss Hamilton, tomorrow, I shall know that you've decided on a career. Then we can plan your future. There's nothing to cry about. You're going to be the world's greatest singer. But, Bob... Oh, I... now, come on, stop it. Well, you'll have me crying in a minute. Come on, we'll talk this thing out ourselves, huh? of sustaining the phrases till the end. Now, come here. Now, take this phrase. I can't go on without you. There, you see? Mm -hmm. All right, now then, now let's try again from here. Sick diaphragm. Now come here and watch me closely. I've been watching you closely. As I have repeatedly told you, your mouth must absolutely be timed with my voice. Do you want the whole world to know that you're a dummy? Well, who's going to tell the world? Nobody but you and I and Robertson know anything about it. Yes, only you and I and Robertson know about it. But any musician can tell at a glance that you're not vocalizing. Well, I don't think you sing that song so good anyway. No better than my expressions. <laughs> you can go now. I have a pupil coming at 12 o'clock.
Oh, I forgot to ask at the studio how many families I got yesterday. About 850. Hmm, biggest mail I got this month. I congratulate you. Thanks. I'll see you at the broadcasting station. Yeah. You mustn't trouble. Are you the pupil my manager expected at noon? Yes. I should like to hear you sing. I'm afraid I couldn't sing for you, Mr. Murdoch. I'd be too frightened. You know my name? Yes. Oh, what does the initial L.H. stand for? Laura Hamilton. What a pretty name. Thank you. I'll have this mirror fixed. A new one put in. You're not superstitious. I'm not sure. Perhaps I am. Well, I'm not. Let me keep this vanity case and prove it'll bring me luck. Just such things inspire me in my work. And in payment, I'll sing for you at this afternoon's broadcast. Any song you like. I like all your songs, Mr. Murdoch. But for a special reason. If you see, I've just told someone goodbye. Oh. Well, then you'd like me to sing goodbye. Yes, goodbye. It's the loveliest of all your songs. Oh, well, thank you. And uh, I'd like to have your phone number. And uh, perhaps I might be instrumental in uh, getting you an audition or something. Thank you. Chelsea, 11808. So Dr. Brooks is sailing at midnight. Well, I'll bring you back from the dock after you've said goodbye to him, if I may. Bob doesn't want me to come to the boat. Both of us would weaken. But when he comes back in six months... But I said I wasn't even going to think of such things. Just music. This cruise meant a great deal to you, didn't it? We planned on it as a honeymoon. And I'm to blame for spoiling your plans? No. Both of us appreciate that you're doing a marvelous thing for me. Bob said to tell you he's leaving me entirely in your charge. Then let me make a suggestion. We invariably do all of our thinking and our dreaming in the language which we know and like the best. So should it be with music. One should actually think and dream in music? To the musician, the world should be an orchestra, sometimes playing harmoniously, sometimes discordantly. Just now, I looked out of the window. You were saying goodbye to Dr. Brooks. Although in a minor key, that was harmonious. Then I wondered what was delaying you. I went and looked out into the hall. You were talking to Mr. Murdoch. That was discordant. I was crying. But Mr. Murdoch kindly said he'd sing for me this afternoon. Any song I should select. Which song did you select? Goodbye. Mr. Murdoch sometimes makes promises which he cannot fulfill. He promises to sing to many women. But Mr. Wilder, he has such depth of feeling in his voice. I can't believe he's shallow. Sometime we'll talk more about him. At the moment, it's enough to say that the afternoon's program is already made up. Mr. Murdoch will not be able to sing for you the song he promised. 
Now, now, come. Uh, shall we do some scales? Oh, for the moonbeams greet the morning. Someone is waiting patiently. Out where my ship of dreams is sailing over a calm romantic sea. And when the distant blue horizon Beckons to me, I know I'll be out where the moonbeams greet the morning, greeting the one. This concludes the special afternoon broadcast of the Radio Advertiser's anniversary program. Grant Murdoch will be on the air again this evening at 7 o'clock. Norman Wilder at the piano. I asked you to put in goodbye as a final number. I had a special reason for singing it. I had a special reason for not singing it. What are you doing with my letters? Just today I realized what I have done in giving you money and fame. I put before the public a splendid dummy so that people wouldn't have the vision of my distorted body when they heard my voice. Your voice? Where were you and your voice before you got a hold of me? People laughed as soon as you opened your mouth. It's my personality that's put this act across and brings in the money. Neither the fame nor the money mattered. My voice is reaching millions. Today it was brought home to me that you have abused the prestige I have given you. You've given me? It's me that people talk about. Say, if you want to know how much your voice has to do with it, you've got it in front of your eyes. Five or six letters a day, while hundreds come from those who admire me. Now get this. You keep your nose out of my personal affairs, or I'll slap you down. Murdoch, keep away from Miss Hamilton. Miss Hamilton? Oh, yes. yes. The young lady you met in my hall, leaving my studio this morning. Oh, so that's it. You're falling for her. <laughs> that's funny. Say, Wilder, have you ever taken a good look at yourself in the mirror? That's beside the point. Remember, you have nothing to do with Miss Hamilton. She differs materially from your type of woman. She has talent and has been placed in my charge. Stay away. You interest me in this, dame. Fact is, as soon as I laid eyes on her, I was interested. Whom are you telephoning to? That's my business. Hello? Miss Hamilton? This is... This is Grant Murdoch. I didn't sing goodbye to you this afternoon because I didn't want to sing it to several million people. I'll sing it to you this afternoon at uh, my apartment. Oh, and say, I heard several complimentary things about you from my manager. Yes. Five o'clock? All right. Well, she's coming to my apartment to hear me sing. <laughs> well, I never had to sing for one yet. Mr. Murdoch in the hall looked like he was in a hurry. What's the matter, boss? Say, he done something to you. Well, boss, there's a mark on your face. Did he hit you? Did Murdoch hit you? Why, that dirty... Are you all right, boss? I won't need you anymore today, Sandy. You can go now.
So you were through with all women. That's what you said last night. That's what you promised again this morning. So where'd you find that? Where do you suppose? In your pocket. Yes, in your pocket. Well, put it down and get out. So you think you can move me in before breakfast and throw me out before dinner? Well, I'm not getting out. Not for any woman. So what are you going to do about it? What am I going to do about it? Well, just this. Grant! Grant! You said we were going to be married. I love you. I'm not going to let you do this to me. Married? Say, get out, and get out quick. I got a date. Well, are you going to get out? No. Are you going to get out, or do I have to throw you out? I'll go. Give me the police. Hello. Police department? This is Norman Wilder speaking. Manager and accompanist of Grant Murdoch. Radio singer. Grant Murdoch has been shot. Yes, the Tiverton Apartments. 
Yes, he's dead. Shot through the heart. I killed him. How do you do, Mr. Wilder? What an attractive place. What's the matter? You must have come back for this. Come back? But I've never been here before. Mr. Murdoch said if I'd come at five, he'd sing for me. Is he in? Do you mean to say you've never been here before? No. Then how did this get here? Well, Mr. Murdoch was going to have it fixed for me. I broke the mirror this morning. Dropped it outside your studio. Oh. Oh, yes. My dear, you must take it and go away at once. Mr. Murdoch isn't here. You must never tell anyone you came to his apartment. But why? I nearly came to... What's happened to him? Mr. Murdoch's been shot. He's dead. Mr. Murdoch is dead? Who killed him? I don't know now who killed him. But you must leave at once. I telephoned the police that I killed him. You telephoned the police that you? I came here to kill him. I bought a pistol and I came here and I found this. Murdoch was in there dead. And this in your vanity case lying on the floor beside him. You thought I'd been here. Did you think I had... Listen. So that's why you told the police you did it. Let's go at once. But they mustn't find you here. Later you can clear yourself. You can tell them someone else telephoned the police. Please go quickly. You mustn't be seen with me. You'll leave as soon as I've gone? Yes. I'll be at my apartment. You'll hear from me. Don't let anyone interrupt. 
Come look around the back there. Bring it in. Got him through the heart. Never mind that. Search the rest of the apartment. Jump down off that roof. Yes, Lieutenant, the blood stopped right here. Yeah, come on. You couldn't get him yourself, so you put him where we couldn't get him. I lost my head. I was jealous. He was going to throw me out of his apartment. He was going you to... You double-crossed me. Now you want me to help you make your getaway. Well, I got a passport. All I need is a grand. Have a heart, Joe. It's the first time she's ever muffed. Besides, that fluke ought to have been killed. Give her the jack and count it out of my pile. You mean it, Lefty? Oh, I don't think I'm falling for you again. Say it's worth a grand to know that fluke I won't ever sing no more. What time does that boat leave? Midnight. When you hear the chime, the hour will be exactly 6.45. Please stand by for a special announcement. A bulletin just received from police headquarters tells us that Grant Murdoch, who for nearly a year has broadcast from this station, was shot through the heart shortly after his afternoon broadcast. The shooting occurred in Mr. Murdoch's apartment. If you'll stand by, I'll try to get further news. What's the matter, honey? You don't seem very glad to see me. I wanted to see you once more before I sail. The most terrible thing has happened, Bob. I was there. What? Where? In his apartment. Grant Murdoch's apartment. Just after he was killed. In Grant Murdoch's apartment? <laughs> A city press bulletin has just been received. Saying that Norman Wilder, the manager and accompanist of Grant Murdoch, after confessing over the telephone that he'd killed Murdoch, attempted to escape from the apartment. He was fired on and wounded, but is still at large. Please stand by. Mr. Wilder's been wounded. Bobby didn't do it. I'll tell you all about it. Oh, come, 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 darling. Sit down. Don't upset yourself like that. Just think of it. I had a date with Mr. Murdoch tomorrow night for dinner. Oh, that little hunchback. I knew he was jealous of Mr. Murdoch's voice. I just knew it all the time. 
That's so. Uh-huh. Say, did you hear the news? Grant Murdoch's been killed. Murdered. You're telling me. I was dressing to go out to dinner with him. New dress and everything. Why does such things have to happen to me? Yeah, but did you know that Norman Wilder killed him? I knew he'd do it. After that, he went and confessed to the police. Oh, never mind did... that. Go on upstairs and get the remains of that ham, hock, and cabbie. Go know, on. But... I know, yeah. but we've got to eat. Go on. I'm telling you, Lieutenant, I'd have croaked Murdoch myself for hitting that hunchback. Say, he's a swell guy. I'd take the rap for him. Stick to the facts. Well, that's all there is, then. I ain't seen either Murdoch or Mr. Wilder since they left the broadcasting station. All right, Sandy. You can go. Thanks. Stay on his trail. He may lead you to Wilder. Okay, Glenn. I'm all ready with the substitute number for the Murdoch broadcast. Fine. Gee, it gives me the willies waiting for 7 o'clock. Sort of creepy, eh, Jimmy? I guess it gives us all that. Who's in Murdoch's room? Nobody. All the doors are locked. Glenn, a signal has just come from Murdoch's room. Hey, that's funny. You better stall until I investigate. Yeah, sure. What's the matter now, Thornton? The usual signal has just come from Murdoch's room. The ready signal. I'm investigating. Your instructions are to keep out of Murdoch's room. I'll investigate. Sound the chimes for Murdoch at 7 o'clock and be ready to cut in with that mic. But Murdoch's dead. Be ready to cut in with that microphone at the usual time. Mr. Wilder made me leave the apartment ahead of him. He said I'd hear from him later. The hour is 7 o'clock. We're tolling the chimes for Grant Murdoch. That's Grant Murdoch's signature song. Norman Wilder must be playing. That's Grant Murdoch's voice. But he's dead. I saw him with my own eyes, dead. Stop. I'm right. Come on, honey. We'll go to the broadcasting station. We'll find out what it's all about. He's dead. I killed him. But that's his voice. Say, what is this? Are you trying to pull a fast one? Either way, she's double-crossed us. Now she's turned yellow. She's liable to squeal. Oh, I know why you're following me, Lefty. But I'm entitled to a break. Anyway, until I can find out whether he's still alive. Sure, kid. I'll wait that long. I got a heart. Murdoch singing? Ah, you're crazy, Mac. That guy's been cold for an hour. Any police broadcast? Go to the radio building in connection with the Murdoch murder and investigate the broadcast now in the air. Shadows are creeping and darkness is near. This is the end of it all. Departed forever, my dear. Promise you'll sometimes.
I was wrong. Love and music are not two masters. I know that now. You must go to him, my dear. still hear his voice. To me, he's like a song that's been sung, yet it lives forever in your heart. I can't get that hunch back out of my mind. I wonder who he thought he was taking the rap for. Maybe for that dame that kissed him after he was dead. Anyway, he took the rap for me. 